In this video, I want to show you how you can visualize uncertainty in your data using the new error bars feature in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can see how I do it. And also I want to show you a neat trick in controlling the uncertainty using parameters. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So visualizing uncertainty in your data is not uncommon when you're visualizing them in charts and graphs. If you've ever used the forecasting feature in Power BI, you will know that this generates to you a set of data points of what your data could look like in the future based on the performance of your data in the past. So because it's forecasted data, which means it's essentially an educated guess, you don't want to present it with just the absolute points on your data points. You want to give or show a degree of uncertainty with them, basically saying the data might be more or less than a certain value. So as part of the March 2020 update in Power BI, they've added this ability for you to use error bars, which allows you to kind of visualize your uncertainty in your line charts. So because it's a new preview feature that just came out, you'll need to enable it from the preview settings here under the preview features. You just need to make sure that this is ticked and you need to restart your Power BI desktop for it to show up in your line chart. So here in this report, we just have one table just to keep it simple. I have a date and I have a value which is supposed to be signifying sales. We're gonna put it in a line chart here just to visualize to you how this looks like over time. So here in this line chart, let's say we want to visualize uncertainty in our data points. Now you can start visualizing it by enabling it under the analyze pane here, and you should be able to find the error bars option here at the bottom. So if you enable it, you'll see that a lot of different options here will be available for you. And it will ask you for a couple of things. So first it will ask you for an upper bound and the lower bound, which is how far or how uncertain you are with your data. So let's say we want to visualize the uncertainty of our data points in our line chart. So here in our chart, we can see that we have about 40,000 in value on average per month. And for each of these data points, we want to visualize that it could be give or take about 5,000 points. So for us to do that, we need to set the upper bound and the lower bound. So let's do that quickly. Let's create a couple of measures just so that we can put some data fields in there. So I'm gonna type upper bound and let's just say 5,000. And let's create another measure here, lower bound minus 5,000. So if I drag this into both my upper bound and my lower bound wells here and change this to relative. So, so this is what we call a relative relationship, which basically means that the upper bound and lower bound value, all you need to do is set how far you are away from the actual value on the data for those to be set. So in this case, you say, okay, so if we have a value here of 27,000, the upper bound of that is 5,000 on top of it. And then the lower bound will be minus 5,000 below it. Now with the error bars, you can visualize them like this as a bar and that's by default, but you can choose other ways to visualize the uncertainty in your data. You can maybe visualize them by a shade area. So if we just disable that, for example, and show shade area, that's probably much more um, common to use. You can even show it as a lines, or you can use a combination of both. So you can use bar, line, or shade. And there are lots of ways that you can customize these error bars. So I think it's quite important for you to, you know, just have a play around and see what you can do here, because there's quite a lot of options. So that's great. So now you know how to start using error bars with your line charts. But let's try to show these values in a table, for example. So let's bring in the dates, the values, and let's say we want to bring the upper bound and the lower bound. 
So you'll notice immediately that there is a problem here. So you'll notice that we have the upper bound, lower bound set, but it's only set in relative terms in the visual itself. So if we wanted to show the upper bound and lower bound values in the table itself, we don't want to use the relative values. We want to instead use the absolute numbers or values against the value in our values column. So this option, which we changed earlier in our error bar, so if you look here, setting this relationship type to absolute is what we need to visualize here so that we can visualize the upper bound and lower bound here in our table. So let's say now, instead of using a relative of 5,000, roughly speaking in our values, we want to set a more dynamic way to show our uncertainty. So let's say we're uncertain by about 20%. Uh, which means that our upper bound or lower bound will be plus or minus 20% from the data point itself. So we can do that easily with the absolute values and even visualize them in our table here. So let's start by creating a couple of measures here. I'm going to create upper bound to here. And we're going to simply sum the sales just to sort of aggregate it. And then we want to set the value 20% on top of our sales. Now, I'm gonna do a bit of arithmetic here. So we'll do sum of sales multiplied by 0 0.2. So basically saying, give me the sales, the actual value of sales, and then put on top of it the 20% of that value. So that just gives us the upper bound for our measure. And we'll just simply copy that. We'll create a new measure lower bound two, and in this one, we're gonna do a minus. So it's saying, give me the value of the data point, and then minus 20% of that value. So first, let's visualize it on the table, just to show you how it looks like. So I'm going to add upper bound and lower bound. So you'll see what that's done, is it's given us the absolute value of the upper bound and lower bound values against each of these elements here in our sales table. Now we can use this now. So let's go back to our line chart here. Let's change the error bars. Let's change the upper bound and lower bound. Let's remove that. Uh, let's change this. Yeah, let's change the absolutes. And let's add the new ones that we've just created. There we go. There you go. So you're now visualizing the data points in your line chart with an uncertainty of about 20%. Sometimes we like to give our users the ability to control the uncertainty boundaries that we might have in our chart. And you can easily do that using the what if parameters to control them. So you'll find the what if parameters under the modeling ribbon here. And if you simply select that, it will allow you to uh, customize your parameter, which will add a slicer to your page. So let's say we want to use a decimal as a data type, and we want to say uh, this is uncertainty, error uncertainty. Maybe that's a little bit more descriptive. So decimal, minimum and maximum. So we want one, and the increment is how much the generation of series will be. So we want to I mean, let's just, for example, 0 0.05. So we say we want an increment of 5% on our slicer. And then our default will be 0 0.2. If you add that, you will see it creates a new table with a measure and a column that we can use. And if we just add it on top here, or maybe it will be easier if I We'll just delete this doesn't really matter anymore yeah cool and I think we want to visualize this as a percentage with no decimals yeah so you can see here is now the what if parameter that it's generated for us it allows us to set the error uncertainty so from zero to let's say 100 percent and it goes in increments of 5%. Now this value sets what the measure 
should be. So you'll see here, uh, if I just show it into a card, so you'll see it changes that value, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. So this measure is now what we'll use to set the upper and lower bound relative to the data or what is selected here in our what if parameter. So let's go back to our error bar. Well, actually, no, we don't have to go to the error bar anymore. We just simply go to our measure. And instead of putting the um, the uncertainty R 0.2% here as a uh, manual entry, we can simply just say, give me the value from our error uncertainty measure. Same thing with the lower bound. So now you've created that link between our what if parameter and our uncertainty, which means that if you change the uncertainty value here, you'll see that also corresponds to how uncertain you are with the data, changing the absolute values for each one of them. So that's pretty handy. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to start using error bars to show uncertainty in your data points in Power BI. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for the next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.